because up to that point, all of the primates had longer front limbs than hind limbs. <laughs> I'm sitting on a little swervel stool and I can't really lift my leg. <laughs> so yeah, so these hind legs, they start to get longer than the front limbs. <gasps> this abstract thinking and this long-limbed resource gathering, some of the main pressures that forced our ancestors to eventually sprout out humans. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is Science Stuff with Brandy Beckett. Ever since I was a kid, I had questions about the origins of us because humans are interesting, right? I think so. I was like, we're the only creatures on this planet that have been able to leave the planet and come back to the planet. It's remarkable. We're the only creatures on this planet to take the rocks and make them into liquids, make them into shapes, as many shapes as we want. We take the rocks from the earth and we just shape them the way we want. We manipulate anything we want on this earth because we have abstract thinking and we're very good with tool making and tool manufacturing. That is fascinating to me. But as a child, I didn't understand that we evolved this dexterity on these unique digits. Think about these front digits and then think about all of the other mammals and think about their front digits and think about how unique ours are. They're the most unique in the mammal kingdom. They're very interesting. We can do things with this. Oh, we just can't pick up its front leg and manipulate it like this. No other creature can. Our closest cousins can't even do it like this. Have you ever seen a, a gorilla just crush something? It's always using its palms and its front fingers. Its thumbs are pathetic. Have you ever seen a gorilla's thumbs compared to its hand? They're little nubs. They hardly use them. They're, they're used to climb. They're not used to manipulate things. These thumbs are specifically used to manipulate things. We are excellent at manufacturing tools because we have these unique front limbs. We have, we have dumb rear limbs. <laughs> Our rear limbs are kind of dumb. We can hardly do anything. And in fact, we lost most of the uniqueness and, and the greatness about those legs that used to control our movement up and down trees once in our genetic history. But we just flattened out our feet and just made all of those bones stiff and it just support us upright because we're taking a different route than most other mammals. We're, we're evolutionarily going upright. <laughs> Our ancestors went upright somewhere around four to three, maybe five million years ago, somewhere in the ballpark of four million years ago. Our ancestry line, your ancestry line, your grandmother's grandmother, grandmother, going back as many grandmothers as it takes to get back four million years. Her and her group around them they were be evolving to be upright bipedal. Their hind legs that they, their ancestors before them would use to get up and down trees now had the pressure that they need to find resources away from up and down the trees. So four million years ago, you, you get all of these interesting pressures that are pushing 
all ancestors away from tree resources and moving on flat ground was the pressure for us to get our resources or at least us in the genetic sense of our ancestry line those ancestors started to go away from the circle of trees that the ancestors before them relied on that's a remarkable thing and that pressure Think about the pressures it would take to get your resources in a different manner than a circle of trees that everyone knows so well. Going out in straight lines and then coming back to the group. Small groups going out and venturing back with resources for the rest of the group. This became a pressure. This became a way of life. So much so that it changed the skeletons of our ancestry line. We broke away from our cousins who were still hanging out in the tree circle. Our, the ancestors of the chimpanzees and bonobos. They're, they were gathering resources the same way they are today. In a circle. Knowing all of the trees that had the good fruit. Knowing how to hunt all of the things they need to hunt, how to gather all of the things they need to gather in their little circle. They didn't need sophisticated tools. Handy tools is all they needed. It's all they need today, just handy tools. Our ancestry line went out away from that circle and away from the tree line to get resources, to get the foods they need, to get the shelter they need. Eventually they got it going out away from those tree lines. So these evolutionary pressures after many, 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 many generations, it started to develop a pressure for longer legs, longer hind limbs than front limbs. Because up to that point, all of the primates had longer front limbs than hind limbs. <laughs> I'm sitting on a little swervel stool and I can't really lift my leg. <laughs> so, yeah, so these hind legs, they start to get longer than the front limbs. <gasps> but also... They start to support them going more upright, being upright more often. Because the chimpanzee and the bonobo, they can all go upright. Of course they can go upright. But the way that their, their pelvic girdle is shaped, the way that their leg bones are shaped, it, gives, it becomes painful for them to be upright for any period of time. After a while, it's like, ugh. Evolution has a way of shifting around bodies after generations because the pressure is there to be more efficient when you go away from the tree line. And also, when you're starting to get these long legs and you're starting to travel away to get your resources and starting to become a little bit more nomadic, a little bit more adventurous, venturing out away from the familiar land that the ancestors before us lived and occupied. This was an exciting time for our ancestors at four, some four million years ago. And another unique pressure was put onto them. You don't have to remember everything in a circle anymore. Why remember everything in a circle? when your resources are going to be going out in basically straight lines. And they're not always going to be in the same place. You're not going to encounter the same tree as your ancestors before in that circle of gathering. In a straight line of gathering, you're going to have to develop what we call abstract thinking. You're going to have to predict what you may or may not 
encounter on this trail that you may or may not have been on before. That takes abstract thinking that goes beyond just remembering all of the good trees in your circle. Abstract thinking became a pressure that helped us to develop tools to, to manipulate our environment around us. And not only develop tools through our abstract thinking, but develop tool manufacturing and teaching generations in the future how to manufacture tools for themselves and how to teach generations beyond them how to manufacture tools. This abstract thinking and this long-limbed resource gathering, some of the main pressures that forced our ancestors to eventually sprout out humans after a few million years. So I find that interesting. And when I was a kid, I didn't know all of those facts. <laughs> and I was told how we became humans in a much different manner when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was taught a story about how we became us by a big powerful God and this big powerful God created one single man and one single woman and then they screwed up because I don't know apparently he didn't make them the best he could but at any rate so he destroys everything and then he builds it up again and then he destroys everything and then he builds it up again and there was a big boat involved in this first or second destruction. <laughs> so as a kid, I'm taught that, yo, this God created you, but then he saved one family on a boat when he decided to kill everything on the planet. And from this one boat of people and animals, all animals on our planet and all people on our planet are here. And I didn't quite buy that as a kid. And like, I remember being eight, nine, ten years old going, it's got to be a different story. That can't be the actual story. But there's some people standing there with some very authoritarian looking outfits on. And they're telling me that's the story. <laughs> so I was never satisfied. I was always a inquisitive kid. And so I asked many questions growing up as a kid, and they didn't really like me in the, in the, in the building where they told me all the stories about the, about the boat and the people and, and the saving and. The <laughs> oh goodness, yeah. So when I grew up a little bit later, I, I on a serious note, when. Um, when I became an adult, I seriously wanted to answer those questions. Where did we come from? I, I knew that the stories in, in, in ancient books are, you know, they're stories of how our ancestors understood that because we understand our culture and we understand our history through storytelling. And that's important. It's important to your culture. It's important to society to tell each other stories, to tell us stories of where we come from and where we're going. Also, for me, I, I, I tend to be a very literal and analytical thinker. And I was thinking, it's good that our culture has a story of its, of its genesis. And many other cultures also have stories of their genesis and they may not always mesh and align with each other but they're all interesting stories but that was never good enough for me so when i was like 40 i was in my 40s when i decided to go back to school i went back to school because i really wanted to pursue some questions like Humans are interesting. Where did we come from? Why are there so many interesting different cultures of us? 
Um, all of these questions were interesting to me and I was pretty ignorant to most, <laughs> most of the evidence and most of the uh, answers to these questions. But the questions are what drive us. Passion for the questions because the answers are just, a, mm, that's just a treat. <laughs> that's just a treat you get for, for passionately pursuing those questions. This has been Science Stuff with Brandy Beckett. And I am going to leave you with an interesting science fact. The blue whale is more closely related to the squirrel than the squirrel is to the opossum. Think about that. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye for now.